Hi everyone, I'm Dego, and today I'm going to just show you something on Blender which I found to be pretty cool. Um, so this uh, is going to talk about basically how to script something, uh, something very basic that I had to, I encountered the need to do. Um, so let's, let's basically look at what I'm doing here. I wanted to make these little rods here move up and down uh, randomly um, to push this this box up and down. Now uh, uh, the the movement of the box depends on obviously the uh, how fast these rods go up and down and uh, well inside the box actually I filled it with water which is what it looks like here. This is one frame. Um, takes about 16 seconds to render this frame and there's like not much in it anyway but uh, the general idea is that there is this box that needs to get moved by these rods now uh, applying the the box to be affected by the rods was quite easy I just had to add a rigid body constraint to each rod and a rigid body uh, constraint to or uh, physics I mean to this uh, box and then it just moved up and down. Uh, there is a invisible uh, wall here which uh, I'm not showing but um, that's basically it. Now I want to share how I actually moved these rods around because it would have been a very long process to randomly move each rod up and down for the length of this clip which is well 3,000 frames and I'm actually moving them every 30 frames. So uh, this 60 frame per second video actually takes around half a minute. Um, but basically, yes, I, I, it would take a very long time to do all 16 rods up and down uh, randomly as well. It's not just going up and down. It's, if you just look at this rod here that's moving, you can see that it's moving randomly uh, completely randomly. Um, sometimes it even stays in its position, uh, like there. So, um, it's a, it's a hard process to do manually. So I decided to script it and I'll open another file, which, uh, demonstrates this a little bit easier. So this is the movement of the rods themselves. I got rid of the box at the top since it's not relevant. So how do you do this? Well, the cool thing about Python, or Blender, <laughs> cut to the chase, um, is that it includes a Python uh, uh, interpreter. And Python is a very simple, easy language to learn. Uh, I would recommend it for anyone that does not know how to code. And I'm going to go step by step here just to explain how I uh, was able to script these to e move each one up and down very easily with just nine lines or eight lines of code really. So first thing we have to know is that we want to set a um, the first frame has everything in its zero state. So I have all these in the bottom of where they can be. This is like the lowest position they can be in the Z position. So it's negative five. They're all at negative five. Let's ignore the X and Y coordinates since uh, nothing's actually moving laterally, just uh, vertically. So if things are moving up and down, then uh, we can actually see that uh, if I were to move this up to, let's say here, the maximum position it's at two and this is because the the origin of this um, of this uh, object is in the middle which isn't the best I, I should I could have just put the origin at the top for each uh, object but since it's in the middle we have basically cons uh, uh, constraint of negative five to two now we want to uh, basically, let's move it back to negative five. And uh, now that we know the range that we want, and we also know that we want to have a keyframe 
in every 30 frames. So here we have a keyframe, here we have another one, here we have another one, and so on until we reach 3000. So to do this, we can actually go to scripting at the top. And here we'll met, we're met with uh, the uh, basically a, just a text editor for Python uh, and a command window uh, here, uh, or I guess a console. Um, I'm just used to MATLAB. So now with this, we can actually start changing some things. And if you hear some background noise, that's just the uh, rain. It's uh, raining pretty torrentially here uh, right now. Okay, so first of all, import BPY. This is basically the uh, Blender Python library. Uh, we need this to control anything in the scene. Math utils. I am not actually using it, so actually I could cut this off uh, and not necessarily use it. I was making a vector object, uh, which I'll show you later, um, that did use uh, math utils uh, library, but I realized that I can just uh, write it all down as a just just a list. Um, and the last thing was random. So if we want to randomize where our rods are, uh, we have to just import random library from uh, just from Python. So let's look at this. For i, so i is just my uh, my frame number. Uh, I could be a little bit more descriptive, but I am used to just having i as a variable here. Uh, so for i in range, and I want to do 30, so I want to start at 30, I want to end at 3000, and the reason why there's a plus 30 here is that the range actually goes from the uh, number up to and not including the last number. So I had to include a plus 30, and then we have every 30. So what this range looks like is this. So let's do list and then let's paste. We can see that it starts at 30 and it goes every 30 and so on until 3000. Now, why didn't I start from uh, frame one? Well, I did set frame one to be all zeros, so I don't want to randomize frame one. I want to randomize everything after frame one. So here we have for every single frame that we are uh, actually changing, so every 30, I will uh, set the time frame to i. This is not necessary. This is an extra line that is not actually necessary. Uh, I just added it for my own uh, understanding. Um, I could have just actually called this time frame itself. Um, but because I'm so used to having i as a variable here, <laughs> I just have the extra line. So really, we can actually get Get rid of this line, this line, and this line, which uh, we'll get to later. This is just a commented out section. So we can actually do all this in six lines, which is super nice. Um, so then we have another for loop. So within each frame that we're changing, we will change for every rod, which is another variable that we're assigning, for every rod in BPY, so the library that we imported dot data. So the data of something dot collections one. So we'll talk about what that is and then dot all objects. So let's copy paste this into here. And let's actually write list here and here. So what do you think this will be? Well, this is actually the collection lifts. So let's actually paste this again without writing list. And we can see that this is bpy.data.collections lifts dot all objects. So I actually made a collection in Blender that is called lifts and uh, it contains all these rods here. 
And uh, I was not good, and I actually just let the naming of the original cube be cube 000, cube 001, and so on. Um, I actually started at zero here, just so it's a, a little bit easier to understand. Um, so I left this as is, and here we can see that the list is actually every single one of our objects. So each one of these objects is a rod. So for every single rod in this whole list, we will do something. So now we're in the stage where we are within each frame, within each rod. So we're two we're basically nested in two for loops. And now in this uh, line, we're doing rod.location. So the location of each one of these objects will be equal to, so we are setting it to the rod.location one, or zero, rod.location one, and a random number. So let's actually check out what this rod.location is. And I just made a mistake there. I pasted it instead of copy. For some reason, control C, control V doesn't actually work too well in here. So I'm just actually uh, pasting everything. So I don't have rod location and that's kind of obvious because I don't have the uh, variable rod. So I am going to have to, um, uh, let's, let's actually copy this. Let's paste and let's do Let's take the third, let's say. So that's the first and the third. So let's actually call it rod equals and paste and three. So that is the third object. So let's do rod is this object. So now if we do rod dot location, we actually see that it is a vector object. Now the vector object is actually what math utils uses, but uh, so we could actually do vector and then do all that stuff. And we would actually have to do probably math utils dot vector and whatever. But we don't actually need that because Python is very easy to work with. So uh, it'll just recognize that these three things are uh, the object itself. Uh, or just just the, the uh, data that we want to put in the object. So now let's look at these numbers. This first number is the X coordinate. The second number is the Y coordinate. And the third number is the Z coordinate. And we want to change the Z coordinate. So uh, let's select this and let's move it up and down. This is not actually cube... Uh, uh, the third, well, this would be the fourth, right? So cube three is this one. So if we do rod.location equals, and let's set it to rod.location zero. So that is going to copy whatever is here already, comma rod.location one, which is what we have here, and then comma, and let's set it to, instead of negative five, let's set it to negative uh, one. And let's see what this will do. Look, it raised the uh, object itself up in the Z direction. Now let's change it back to where it was, but that basically gives you an idea of what we're trying to do here. We're not changing the X or Y coordinates of this object. We're just changing the Z coordinate. We'll which will be a random integer from negative five to two. And because that was our range. Now, you might be wondering, oh, can we just do integers? Well, no, we can actually do other things. It doesn't have to be integers, but I just decided to do so, uh, just to keep it simple. And uh, you might be thinking, okay, so if there are integers, then why doesn't uh, it look like this if I move it? Why doesn't it like just snap when it moves uh, in the in the video like that? Why doesn't it do that? Well, the reason for that is that because we have uh, um, keyframes every 30 frames, right? 
So we have a keyframe here and another keyframe here. So we have a bunch of keyframes and what the keyframes are doing is actually smoothing out the curve. So here we can actually look at the graph editor and it's going to look crazy. But if we look at this random one, let's look at three, which is the one we were looking at already. Let's let's deselect. Let's select the purple curve. And you can see that the position isn't just linearly going up, down, up, down, up, down. It's not, it's, it, so actually linearly would actually also work. Now this is a little bit more curvy like, but um, if it did transition directly to where it's supposed to go, it would be just like a, a rectangle. So it would actually look something like this. Uh, wait, no, it would look something like, something like, like this and like that, like it would look like a, a re rectangle. So it would be fit. It would technically be called a step function. So it would go up directly and then, uh, to its des destination. So that would basically move the block directly up so it'd go like that snap on uh in that one uh in uh that location now that's not happening now the reason why we can just have integers is that it will auto smooth here and we won't have to worry about um the the uh blockiness of the integers because we're just setting it to a position it doesn't matter if it's an integer or not it'll just snap on and uh, make the curve itself now you can actually change this curve if you want like afterwards right uh, you can you can make it even like go do something like this right like where it goes over and then back down or uh, you can even if you don't like these uh, these these curves you can actually get rid of that you can um, do change the handle type to uh, vector and then it's just like it stops it just stops uh, so you can do that too um, but for this I just decided to make them flow a little bit more nicely uh, more softly so I'm gonna go back to the timeline here and uh, and uh, you can actually see here that some of these keyframes are duplicated because because it is random and it is there is a very probable chance that uh, the one keyframe will be the same as the other because we only have a range of well we have negative five to two so we have negative five negative four negative three negative two negative one zero one two so we have eight position possible positions uh, it is very possible for the next position, there's a chance of one over eight to be the same. So sometimes it does do that. And I am very happy with that happening. If you don't want that to do that, then, uh, you can, you can definitely, uh, have an, an if statement or something in there. Um, but I was fine, fine with that. So we have the new location. Now let's actually insert a keyframe we can actually do a rod dot keyframe insert and uh, the data path which it will use is location so it needs to know what kind of keyframe is it is it like a modifier keyframe is it rot maybe it's rotation no it's we want location keyframe um, and we also want the frame to be equal to frame time so we got to remember we're still under this first frame that we were working with. So frame 30, we're working with the, the one rod we were working with. So we actually insert the keyframe for location and at that specific frame time. Now we're done with that. So we move to the next uh, rod and next rod and next rod. And then you uh, completed all 16 in the right. And then you move to the next frame, which is 30 frames ahead. And you just keep doing that until you reach 3000. Now, there is one thing here at the end, I had a problem where 
everything would just stay like this. And I wanted it to go back to zero after this. So I wanted my frame 3030, or actually I wanted probably some, I don't know, 3000, let's say, uh, to go back to zero. So I could, you know, set everything down to zero and then do that and blah, blah. Um, and then set the keyframes over and over. Or I can just go up here and actually set, I can comment this out, and I can actually set to negative five. And how do I do that? Well, I can just actually get rid of this for loop. So we want to be in keyframe uh, um, 3000, right? And for every rod that we have, we want to set it to negative five. And are we in 3000? We are. So I'll just run this and there is an issue. So the issue is that we need to unindent everything. And now everything is down to uh, zero. So that is uh, very simple. And now we can actually see that everything was moving and then it goes down to zero at uh, 3000 and it stays. So hopefully you learned uh, something interesting here. You can uh, do a lot of very interesting thing. This this is super simple and basic. Uh, I just delve my, I just, I just, uh, suck my toes into it a little bit just to see what uh, this was all about. But uh, as you can see, you can get very far and put in very minimal amount of work to get a lot of, basically a lot of information into a scene um, with something like this. So uh, hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I can make more of these videos once I learn more.